Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing fantastically wherever you are on this lovely planet. Um, and welcome. I, I'm Mark Jack with Eva, and I would like to welcome you to your Yoga Solutions Live on this um, uh, nice day. <laughs> uh, th uh, Tuesday, 3rd of August, 2021. So um, yeah, I've just got back from the World Yoga Festival. I had a very pleasant time with my um, lovely partner, Abigail. And um, yes, being, being in that nice atmosphere and in, in nature and the, in a tent underneath the trees. Very, 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 very nice. And, and of course, I uh, taught a couple of sessions. And um, I, I really am the... Um, the maverick, the um, the thing that's different out there. Um, it, it was a really interesting because I haven't had sort of contact with with uh, large groups of yogis and uh, the the sort of normal yoga thing for such a long time. Um, immersing in it again was uh, yes, it's quite it's quite astounding. It, it reminded me of how different the way I look at things is and um, yes and uh, all sorts of uh, notions came to me over the t over the time I was trying to kind of work out because you know when you have um, when you stumble on something it makes answers to yoga practice that uh, the answers to um, body difficulty when you have a practice that gives you answers that work it's it's um it's very hard to reconcile why it is so confu why it can be so confusing for people that are that come from a different background because I, i'm i'm not i'm not talking about hidden yoga mysteries that you have to learn and and um no, only the only the secret few, only the elite few know about it. It's it's, it's not like that. It's uh, the thing I talk about is is real world stuff, as in uh, how you relate to the earth um, gives you, gives your body gives you the experience uh, the somatic experience of what support feels like. Um, how you relate to space determines whether you have to carry your weight with your spine or not. And um, and yet, uh, you know, and, and carrying your weight with your spine will lead to backache, okay, that sort of thing. And, and people sort of know the problems, um, but the solutions that they turn to are kind of around what they have learned. And I'm talking about one camp of... of um, yoga practitioners, the, the ones that um, want to be instructed uh, step by step through postures. So what, what shape, you know, you lift your arms, you spread your legs, you uh, spread your feet, you take a breath. And then there's a, the, then there's a sort of an instruction to, there's some sort of emotive instruction that um, helps you get into the nature of what you're doing. Um, around uh, you know central power or or um, connecting to the heavens or whatever, and and it's you know that that aspect of it makes it a little more somatic. Uh, but you see people hurting themselves while while they're doing it. They're they're sort of holding their arms as straight as possible and hurting their shoulders and elbows and wrists and their um, you know the the more effort involved the the more. They are doing their yoga, so they think the more benefit they'll get from it, and um, and still they're, they're they're leaning they're leaning over the bit of spine that always hurts, or they're holding themselves up or down with their hamstrings and the groins, uh, the things that always complain, um, and that there's sort of no real association between the experience of the person the the emotional content the the intention behind the practice and what they are doing physically um there's this degree of separation which leads to all sorts of 
uh, issues in people's practice. And, um, and uh, you know, if it doesn't cause them any pain, there's no real problem except the repeating habit, the exaggeration of the issue will lead to problems eventually. You know, uh, if you always hold yourself up with your back and it's the only way you can breathe, then you're going to get backache, you know? And if you um, always have to tuck your chin in to be upright, then you're going to get neck ache. <laughs> and it's just the way it works. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm not casting any aspersions. It's just um, that, that that's one side of things. So it, that's kind of the, the more prevalent approach to yoga is top-down processing, where you, where you, your brain, you know, decides to do something to the body and then there's an outcome that you associate with the yoga um that that's the reason for it and it's um because the intellect is you know it's um high highly high status in the west i'm not saying that's wrong you know um jnana yoga is uh, a path it's a path to yoga but um, traditionally it involves studying sanskrit and the scriptures and all the rest of it but um it, it refers to yoga through knowledge and it is a path and perhaps for those of us because 90 percent of us are disenfranchised from our bodies disconnected perhaps that's the reason for it but for the way i see it um that's not really the way to find the answers because the, the mind can only recreate what it knows. It can only reproduce what it knows. It, and, and so you seek, you seek an external idea, make this shape, um, deal with this, with your Maya fascia, work with these muscles. You know, you, you, you have an idea of what to do with the body. Um, and then you impose that idea upon the body and you'll only do it in the way that the body already moves. Because there's no real somatic connection apart from sort of assessing the efforts and getting those efforts validated or uh, by the teacher and you know whatever. It's it's a long route. Um, the the intellectual path. It's not wrong. It's just it, it, I find it it's too slow because um, what was happen what happened for me and what I see in most people is. Um, uh, I, I was uh, I found difficulty in my body when I came to yoga uh, when, when I began my practice as an adult again. Um, there was the reason was I was seeking freedom from distress, free freedom from pain, that sort of thing. And um, it was very obvious to me. I've got a very loud body. It tells me no on certain terms when it's not happy. But I think most people are discomfort in discomfort. And they turn to yoga to solve that. And the wholehearted engagement will do something, you know, just engaging with the body will do something and make you feel a bit better. But when there's, when issues arise from it, then, then if you're going to use the mind, you need to use the mind to work it out, to, to make it better, not um, impose external ideas of what should make it better but practice until you can make it better. And that takes you into the other camp. The other camp of yoga uh, the, are the somatic experiences, the, the people that want to dance. And uh, that was something else I witnessed is on the, on the music night. Uh, those same people that were um, holding themselves stiff and giving, giving themselves joint problems to do yoga were free in their bodies. They, they were freely expressing with their bodies, through their bodies, not really thinking about it, they were responding to the music. But again, because there wasn't presence of mind, they were expressing in the way that their bodies already express. So there was a, there was a baseline intent with the dancing to the music and other forms of yoga. There are celebratory forms of yoga that are not too fussed about details and alignment and all the rest of it. And it's more about your somatic experience. And there's a sort of mindlessness in that you're purely following how the body seems to want to express itself. It's still the person, it's still the personality doing it. 
So they still they will still be lifting themselves with their lower back when they want to be up. You know, if that if that's how they do it normally anyway. So they'll dance and they'll feel great, but they'll come away and they'll have a bit of backache again in the morning or knee pain or whatever it is that they're carrying around. And then there's, um, there's, yeah, there's the people that are genuinely on the yoga path from the learning kind of perspective where they've, they're, they're learning about the Vedanta and they understand yoga from a philosophical perspective. These, by the way, seem to be the most comfortable in them, the people that are most comfortable in themselves. Although their bodies were probably in pain here and there, it's just they, as people, weren't that bothered by it because they were sort of happy in their souls a little more because they had a broader, perhaps more connected to the divine experience of life. But they were they were missing the the both the wholehearted ability to throw themselves around to music and they saw no value in making shapes because it it's nonsense it's um, you know in in the in the within the the scope of what yoga is the the asana is just dealing with the body and the body is not who i am you know it's um, i am consciousness experiencing life and my job is to elevate my consciousness to a degree of permanent bliss you know so um yeah it was interesting it, it, people are divided into camps and and um and because of that there is it, it's sort of a there's a blinkered there's a blinkered thing around all other aspects of being in your body and um what I like, what I think I like to offer, it, it, you know, I, di I didn't build my offerings around being aware of the separation. I, um, it's just, I, I'm, I just do my yoga to see what works, see what I can help work, you know, see, see if what I can, uh, the way I'm approaching my physical practice helps me feel great in my body and I want it to be something I take into my daily life. I want it to so, so that I can feel as good as I do when I'm dancing, when I'm walking down the road. And I want to have meaning behind my physical practice as well. I want to find the meaning, the, the broader ramifications of what these ideas of kindness and, and support and freedom mean. Uh, in practical terms, so that I can, so that my mind can learn on can my my mind can be guided in a direction towards that never-ending state of bliss in that general direction, it, and, and that part is working. I'm getting so much happier as I get older. I'm getting so much fitter as I get older. So much more relaxed in my body and strong. And um, yeah, so uh, I, I, I think simply by sort of pointing yourself towards the thing that resonates with you, um, it's, it's, a, it's the starting point, it's the place to go. But you know, one of the things I, I listened to, I heard in, uh, in one of the talks, it was by um, the man that runs the thing, he's, he's, a, he's a lovely man and he's... Um, is of one of the schools of Vedanta, one of the unusual ones that talk about non-duality. And, and everything he was talking about totally resonated with me. And it was, um, no, I lost my thread, what, what was I, what was it I noticed? It was, um, yes, it was, it was around, yeah, it was around non-duality. This sort of um, idea that you are, you are a part of everything. As in, there is everything. God is everything. The the divine, what the thing that we're trying to get in touch with, is everything, and that includes you. That includes, and it includes you as a consciousness. It also includes you as a person and your body. So yoga is already occurring. It's just your your position in witnessing that that, 
that um, etc and you know that it's very deep philosophical ideas and i saw everyone in the room sitting like this sort of smiling at the ideas but completely disembodied and i had to practice whilst i was listening i had to practice what i was hearing whilst i was listening uh, for it to make sense to me so um yeah I, I'm, I'm not sort of saying anyone's anyone's wrong everyone is human including me uh, that and that human tendency to to be to gravitate towards what we like as opposed to uh, what is beneficial for us uh, um, is a narrowing down of choice and uh, oh th th this was the thing the non the non dualistic idea is that there is not a right and a wrong but there is a direction that you can point your thinking your actions actions being in the important part um, that is either beneficial to your soul's journey or, or even your personal journey or it's not <laughs> it's pretty obvious yeah and, and we call that good and bad but the bottom line is it's a choice it's a choice and when you're looking at um, these different directions of yoga you've got the choice of learning about it through your head and you've got the choice of learning about it through your body the direct somatic experience you've got the choice of taking a kind of philosophical position at the center of these things that acknowledges the value of understanding that acknowledges the value of direct experiencing through the body because in the end the place of truth is in the middle it's, it's not an average between those two things it's not a halfway house of, of sitting on the fence between intellectualism and somatic indulgence it is a place in the center that turn somatic indulgence into somatic direct understanding it's a place in the middle that turns the mind into a um, the tool that can create patterns and shapes and make sense of the nature you know? There's the, the place in the middle, the philosophical place, needs to be applied. It needs to be acted upon. It needs, it needs to be done. So you need to celebrate your yoga. And you need to uh, be aware of how you are dancing. So as not to cause yourself pain. Anyway, that, that, was, my, that was my big takeaway over the, over the weekend. Is, um, my approach is very different. And it's because it's not pointing down a particular track. It's an attempt to cause a three-dimensional understanding, direct understanding through body and mind of life. And that, that's what I do. And, uh, and I believe if, if you listen to any sort of yogi, um, the, 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 um, the yogi's philosophy generally is direct understanding. It's not, it's not about... Um, learning stuff externally it's about getting to a place of direct immersion in reality so that you understand things directly with the mind and I, I, you can you can read all of potentially sutras you can and you'll find less stuff you know it's not it's i'm not saying anything different um that being said uh, this is yoga solution so i want to give you um an answer <laughs> for for everything and uh, there is an answer and it's through how you interact with the world it's between how you interact with the world and the space you occupy through the breath. That's it. Now, if you're thinking the breath is a separate thing from how you interact with the world and the space you occupy, then once again, you're in a preferential place. I sit and breathe or I do postures. Okay. And uh, th this was the thing that I ended up um sharing on my second session is uh, i recorded it and i'm going to make it available to my um my members uh, on my website um the, the it was an hour and a half session on how um the breath itself 
can become the, the most powerful and most re revitalizing, the most satisfying way of engaging with life. Um, I, I'll, I'll give you a simple example. Um, let's see. If, if um, you want to lie down with me, now, we've done this many times before, or, or I have anyway. And if you've seen me, you've probably um, tried this out yourself. And you organize yourself so you can have, or so that you can interact with the world beneath you with each heavy, heavy structure that, you, that um, you've got. So you want to be able to, the whole body wants to be able to use the head for support, the head on the ground. So you, you find a way of engaging with the ground underneath the head. Okay, that's one thing you need. You need to be able to support yourself with your wings. So um, if you sort of roll your shoulder into the ground on one side, it will roll the body away from it. It will roll the ribs away from it. Try the other side. So you're, so you're supporting yourself with your wings. You could try doing both of those things. The shoulders, both shoulders and the head. Okay, and that's you supporting yourself. You might find yourself pressing down through your feet as well. So you're engaging with the world to look for support. If you wanted to pick your feet up, you would press down through the pelvis. You see? That's part one. That's the action. The action is engaging with the world to find support. So if you now make all those structures get involved with your contact, um, the whole body presses through the spine, uh, presses through the head to find support from the head. Shoulders can join in with the ground, the feet can join in, and the pelvis can join in in its own fashion. And it's very difficult to do more than one thing at a time with a thinking mind. So if you can take yourself into all points of contact, so that you are no longer different part. It's you as a whole, touching the earth, engaging with it, but in order to breathe. So the action of engaging with the earth is the breath. You'll find the, the effort uh, changes what goes on on the inside. The effort of engaging with the world to breathe, as opposed to lifting yourself, will cause things like the belly muscles to work, it will cause the rib cage to work. What you need to do is you need to relax the, the root, the pelvic floor, as you engage with the earth. To breathe. And that should feel like a, a wholehearted, celebratory breath, akin to a yawn and a stretch, that style of thing. Then if you, if you are engaging with the earth, it's the arriving breath that is doing it. You don't really need to continue to individually work those things into the ground. So if you can breathe into the ground, yes, the whole body is involved with that, but it's the breath that is pressing you into the ground. And if you do it so that the so that it's the feet, the upper back, and the uh, sorry, the shoulders and the head more than anything else, in that moment the pelvis will become light because it does, okay, as you breathe. Now the next job is to let go, but we think of letting go as letting go, letting go towards the ground, so you'd normally drop. But if you let go towards where you where you're touching the ground at this moment, which is the feet, the head and the shoulders, having cause an active breath, that is doing the support, when you let go of the breath, it's an in, inner release. You let go within yourself, within your belly, within your heart, within your lungs, within your ribs. You let go within yourself, but give yourself to your touch. So you'll find your feet waking up, you'll find your contact as the source of support as you let go within. The spine won't have to carry your weight, the core and the ribs will be responding to the release of the breath. So everything you need 
in terms of support in this position is first of all because you breathe so once again let go of holding as you breathe through your feet as you embrace the earth through head and shoulders from the breath so the arriving breath is because you drop into your feet your head and your shoulders it's the breath that's supporting you from within you don't have to push and pull with your legs And when you're ready to let go, just make sure you know where the ground is underneath your feet, your shoulders and your head. So that as you let go within, you can drop your weight without to the base. And then it's the release of the breath that does it. It doesn't mean there's um, no effort but uh, in, in the legs and things, but it's not um, tension. It's the body breathing, the whole body breathing. Uh, a more obvious, have I got time? Yes, just about, I've got a minute. Uh, a more obvious experience of the breath is the thing that's meant to support you, <clears throat> is if you can, if you come up into, not, not, um, not um, what's it called, shoulder stand, where you're sort of carrying the weight of your body with your hands, but a sort of balance between your shoulder blades pulled into the ground slightly. And make sure you don't have to push the ground away with the neck or head. So if there's any holding around the head and neck, you need to back off a bit. You need to back off so that the head's less heavy. And you need to be able to relax in space. Now, you can sort of... The only way really to relax your spine in space is if you can source the arriving breath, excuse me, I'm just going to turn my alarm off, is if you can source the arriving breath in the ground. Now if you're being, if you're balancing on your ground, the breath will feel shallow, it'll feel uh, hard to breathe in and you'll feel a bit choked up like, like you can hear in my voice. But if, on the other hand, you can, excuse my mic, it's a little bit, there it is, okay. If, on the other hand, what, what's going on in terms of support is the core and the chest needs to use the shoulders, the purchase of the shoulders and the head on the ground to breathe. So instead of um, trying to balance and hold yourself up, you literally bear down into the ground with your right um, through through the head and shoulders with the breath, so that it's the chest that does the work, the core does the work. That breath within you, using the purchase of the ground underneath head and shoulders, will support you in space, literally, uh, like you're a balloon, you know, like you're inflated, and it's the effort of the core and the rib cage using the ground for support that creates that internal pressure and supports you as you breathe so breathing into an embrace of the earth not trying to balance will make the breath much more available and it will change where you are in space to a place where you can float your spine see when you're there the only job really is to be able to let go within as you allow your base to fall away from that dissolving base within you. So use the ground to breathe, stay with the ground and let go within so your weight can be given to your base. So it's a release of tension. If I can let go into my base to breathe my base supports me, then my breath is supporting me. If I can let go into my base as I release the breath, I can rely on balance and the bones to support me. And if you want to take that into shoulder stand, you won't have to carry your weight, see? It won't be that trapped feeling or that nastiness on your neck. 
Anyway, um, that's what that's one of the things people get out of doing shoulder stand is it kind of forces you to uh, work the breath a little, to to use the um, actions of the breath and its release to support yourself. If what you're trying to do is go to sleep in the thing, then you'll end up stretching, and that will give you a bit of a sore neck. But at the same time, you might let it might need to let go of something, so you might get some value out of it. Okay. So um, that I didn't teach that at the weekend. It was uh, that's just what I came up with that moment. It, it, the, the thing that I was sharing with you was that the actions of breathing themselves, relating to the ground, is what allows you to be free in space. So if you can find the wherewithal to use your ground as the support that you rely on when you let go to breathe, when you use your ground as the support you rely on, when you let go of your weight within, not give it away without, because that makes you heavy, when you let go of the weight within with the release of the breath, then you'll end up in free floating, Structural support, in principle. Um, the thing that makes that difficult is breathing habits. And if you are someone that habitually lifts to breathe, then um, that will you'll find it hard because that, that lifting to breathe with the spine will preclude any of the other things that you you could be doing. You could find from the naturally arriving breath that is related to the ground, related to support. So there's your answer. Um, now, how's that the answer to everything? Well, if the center of you, if your breath, spine, your breathing gear is relating to earth to support you, whether you're breathing in or out, then there is no need to be pulling yourself around, pulling your spine around, pushing it around, holding it up, dropping it down. There is no need to do that. And the periphery, your arms, your legs, even your head, the peripheral joints won't be under unnecessary strain. So you won't get distortions in your knees, you won't get tightness in your hips, your shoulders will be free to breathe and fly, you know? <laughs> and, um, and the whole thing brings you back to your heart. Any outward action supports you inwards, and we any inward gathering gives you an outward support, sense of support, and um, yeah, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> okay, um, that'll do. I, I've gone on a bit because I was uh, talking a bit, quite a lot about um, about stuff before I share the practice with you. That'll do from me. Um, I've got a Saturday workshop coming up uh, this weekend, this Saturday, 10.30 till one. I think there's some places left if you want to drop in for a two and a half hour Saturday morning retreat. It's always builds up gently into some sort of flow kind of thing. And it's usually in response to the needs of the participants. I haven't got a theme for it. I haven't got a title for it yet. Um, and I've been doing titles recently, but uh, I think I'm saving my my theming for when I put on a course. I'm going to put on a course uh, end, last week of August. Um, last week of August, five a five day retreat uh, uh, online. Uh, mornings only. Although I, I think when I do these five day retreats, I, I offer uh, a Q and A afternoon session for anyone that's interested where and that can involve practice too but for, um, five mornings three hours three hour sessions and it's going to be called sacred breath two it's um a deep dive into the various areas of breathing and how and pranayamas that can awaken those responses what we can do to just get it going and then some practices where we put it into use uh, in in movement and postures and life, and I want to work through the entire body, and uh, I'll, I'll probably I'll probably do um, an intro workshop, possibly on, on on Saturday before or something. We'll see. Um, yes, uh, to to 
so you can get a taster of what sort of thing I'll be doing. But it's going to be it's going to be a dedicated course, so you can only sign up for the course. If you can't make every day, it doesn't matter because the thing will be recorded and you can go through it in your own time. Um, if you want a, and there'll be a different price for um, uh, interactive. Uh, you know, the, those of you that want me to interact with you directly will be the premium places and they will be limited possibly to no more than eight because I, I want to give some good good clear um, guidance for the people that turn up for that and those of you that are kind of there to experience it in your own time and your own way and don't really want me to um, involve myself in your process uh, so much then uh, you can get a view only place and it'll be cheaper uh, and that still gives you access to the recording so um, there you go yeah so that will be the end of last week of august i think and uh yeah we uh, every, every day for for five days three hours in the morning possible uh, q a sessions in the afternoon for specifics and um yeah I, it's not up on the website yet. I need to do that today. So hopefully later Thursday you can get hold of that. All right, my dears. I hope that was, um, wasn't too much pontificating on my part. I hope it was of use and of interest. And I will see you very soon. Um, yes, yeah, same time, same place next week. Much love to you all. Bye now.